Hi, welcome to 16 Bit Bench. Matt here. Um, sorry, there haven't been many videos recently. I've, I've not been very well and I haven't really felt like um, recording any of the things I've been working on because we're just um, doing the same sort of stuff that we've done before, so there's no more new information there. Um, one of the things I did was bought a uh, auction lot of computer bits and it was full of Commodore stuff. Um, so I have a bit of Commodore stuff to do. Now I didn't own a Commodore when I was younger, so this is all new to me. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, you know, interesting, We're learning. Uh, so what have we got in here? Real Action, Real Action 8, some games on there. Um, so I've got like four of these. Uh, they None of them really work very well. Um, they all need belt replacements. So if you go online and find a company called DataServe Retro, and you have a look on their website, you can find replacement belts. Here's one, comes in a little packet. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, uh, they are one of the only people that really stock this stuff anymore. So, they, you know, super handy. Obviously these are just generic belts and if you knew the exact sizes then you could probably source them yourself, but you know, not for very much cheaper than what DataServe sell them for. So replacing the belt on a Commodore uh, tape drive is a little bit trickier than doing it on a Spectrum. There's a bit of the housing and there's a bit of the mechanism that is in the way. And we'll be replacing both belts. So there's two belts in here. One drives the drive and the other drives the tape counter. So it's just four screws to take the top off. And there we go. I've already been in here before, I've actually recapped it, so um, on the back here under this metal shield is, is a small, smallish board and it has uh, th either three or two capacitors on it, um, standard values, and I just replaced those just because uh, it's good practice on all the equipment to do that. Um, so the first belt we're going to change is the uh, tape counter, and that's really easy, so you can just see there. You can peel it off. In fact, what I'll do, let's zoom in. There we are, we zoomed in. So you just peel it off the uh, drive spindle here, and then you've got it there, and it's just on this white wheel uh, below here, and just comes off like so. So there's nothing really obstructing that one. And if you give it a bit of a stretch, you can feel it is floppy, it's kind of old, and uh, it's not working very well, but the tape counter belt is not essential to the function of the machine and uh, it probably would work fine as it is. So in order to replace it, there's just this little latch here, you see that lifts up and the belt and one end of the, one side of the belt goes under there. So we go around the spindle, Ooh, someone just messaged me. Oh, it's all kicking off now. So, um, yeah, there we are. That's that belt replaced, and we give it a few turns. You can see the counter increments. In this case, it's incrementing backwards. Let's turn it the right way. Uh, and the reason we give it a few turns is the belt is um, is kind of a triangular shape, isn't it? Cross section? No, it's square in a cross section, and that's so it rides in the groove, rides in its groove, and it stays in its groove. And you just give it a few rotations, and that evens out the sort of angle of the belt so then it's riding correctly in the groove and there we go so yeah the tape drive belt non-essential to replace but you get you get them in a set anyway um or you can just get them individually if you're really that bothered but i thought i'd do it both of them uh so that's nice and easy that's the easy side of it now we turn it over and we've got the actual main drive belt here let's just move that in the center we've got the main drive belt here and this is super floppy and I can feel it is that should be much tighter than that um, in order to get to the belt you need to remove the two screws take off the shield like that and then we have the board now the board's only partially in the way so we'll just remove the screw so we can kind of get underneath it then what we'll do is unthread the uh, the belt like so and you can see now the problem is that the belt is actually 
stuck under a piece of uh, metal here and it's not possible to remove the belt without either cutting it or, or removing the metal. So in order to remove the metal, there's two screws that hold it. There's two screws that hold it in. There's two screws that hold it in the positions. You've got one here and you've got one on the side here. And the one on the side's actually kind of a, mm, on this one it's different. On the other one, it was a split pin. This one is just a hex screw. Um, so we'll just unscrew this one. I have the impression that this screw is some kind of set screw that actually the torque of it might be important. Um, so when I come to testing, if I have any problems, then that will be somewhere to look. So yeah, we remove this screw on the top here and then there's two, you see there's two on the side. There's one closer to the motor, just down here. You see that? And there's one upwards here and that is on yeah, there's a slider here for, I think, probably the eject button. That's the eject button. You see the mechanism moves there. And that's just holding it in position. So then we just, uns all we have to do is just partially unscrew this screw. Okay, and then just come out. You can see it's got a little collar on it. It's because it rides in that groove. Whoa. Didn't really want to do that. There we go, it's done now. So we'll take the belt off. And that's our old belt. And again, as with the uh, counter belt, it's really floppy. You get the, uh, the new belt and you're like, oh yeah, it's much, uh, much tighter. You can tell the difference. So in order not to get confused, uh, we test it again and we throw it in the bin. Uh, okay, so then all you need to do is hook the belt into See this little space here is into this space. Now, if you were designing a tape mechanism, would you design it in a way that meant that you'd have to disassemble any parts in order to replace the perishable items? Now, I would say no, you wouldn't, because that would be annoying. But apparently, Commodore did. Again, actually getting this, uh, this screw in is a bit of a pain because it's... Uh... It's behind, this spindle's in the way. There we are. So now's the easy bit. You just go around the big wheel, around the back of the small wheel, and you can just kind of fish it through under the circuit board. If you're having trouble, you can obviously move the circuit board a little bit more, um, but you should be fine. And then like we did with the other one, we give it some rotations just to make sure the belt is now sitting in the grooves and it's sitting you know, uh, correctly. There we go, so we're done. And we take this, uh, this, this kind of suspect set screw sort of bit. And it did have a bit of screw lock on it. It's like uh, orange stuff. So. Normally, when you find screw lock on a screw, it's either because it's been set to a position, uh, to an exact, say, torque or, or position. Yeah, because it just kind of, once it's in, it just kind of spins. Yeah, it concerns me, that one. Um, yeah, so it's been set to a specific torque or position and then set in, the, in place. So uh, a good rule of thumb is do not remove any screws that have screw lock on them unless you really have to. Now, if that is some kind of, you know, setting screw, some kind of torque screw for the mechanism, then again, really bad design that it has to be removed in order for you to get to the belt. Um, now, if there may be another way uh, to replace the belt there. I honestly, you know, I puzzled over it and then I went to uh, the, the, the internets and uh, I checked it. And obviously, honestly, I couldn't see another way. Um, so yeah, one of the things I did notice is down here on, on the buttons, there are little tiny springs that sit in grooves just to sort of provide a little bit of uh, pushback when you push the button and the button goes back to where it is. So uh, just make sure you know, they're in position. One of these ones I did open, 
uh, had a, had one of those springs in the bottom and it took me a little bit of time to figure out where it went. Uh, so that is mostly that. As I said, I did recap the board as well. I haven't made a video about that. It's just two capacitors if you need to know how to recap something. Um, my Game Gear recap video or any of the Spectrum recap videos, the method is exactly the same. You look at the capacitor, you see what value it is, and you replace it with one of the same capacitance, that's the same Farad rating, but a equal or higher voltage rating. I've already given the tape head to clean. I just need to clean the case now, and then I would consider that unit to be, uh, be refurbished and ready to rock and roll. So what I'm gonna do is put it in my uh, Commodore 64 testing area, uh, which I'll show you a picture of in a second, and we'll see if it works. So this is the official 16-bit bench Commodore testing area. Uh, this is more commonly known as the side of the office that I sublet to <laughs> to my office partner. Uh, he's on holiday, so kindly has allowed me to use this space um, just to stick some stuff in here for a while. Um, of course, it will have to go when he comes back. So we've got a Commodore C64C. Uh, this is the newer, uh, the latest, later revision of the Commodore. See, this one's a little bit yellow. Needs some, needs the keys cleaning up a little bit. Uh, but unlike the uh, bread bin I've got up here and the other 64C I've got here, this one actually works. There we go. Oh, lovely refresh rate in the camera. I don't know if you'll see that on the video. Um, yeah, so that's that's the Commodore 1702 monitor that I picked up in a job lot of stuff. We've got, this is a 1530 tape drive. This is a 1531. And then these two are aftermarket um, German made, uh, German design ones, I think. They're still made in China, Taiwan. Um, exactly the same internals as the official Commodore ones. The, the design's a little bit easier to use in there, actually. Um, so yeah, and uh, then I've got a big pile of 1541s and 1541-2 uh, drives that all need to be tested. Um, I was going to do that with a, um, you can buy an adapter that, that allows you to plug into a PC. I was going to do that, but I could never get it to work. So anyway, uh, let's try and load a game. I've got a tape in there. Press play on tape. There we go. Lovely noise. Let's see if that works at all. I think it would have reported back. The screen's filthy. Oh no, found hate. And the drive's actually stopping before it didn't even stop. It just kept whirring. I do find it weird that the... Uh, I don't get any noise with the Commodore. Well, it appears to be doing something. Um, I'll come back to it in a minute if it, if it changes. And there we go, successful loading of hate. <laughs> that's some quality music. The picture on the model is really good. And that's just, that's just composite as well. Composite um, uh, looks really nice on this uh, CRT. On the big Sony Genesis one, it looks a bit shitter actually. Um, so I made a custom a uh, SCART cable, you see that one with a switch, and that switch is uh, between composite and S video. Obviously, it makes no difference here because I've only got the composite plugged in. Um, but yeah, quite an easy cable to make. You just need a, a, a DIN connector and a switch, and you can make your own. Um, so, yeah, when I sell this Commodore on, I'll be selling it with that cable, obviously. What I need to do now is go through the other decks and make sure they work and then a job for early next week is to start testing these five uh, disk drives to see if I can get those to work as well um, and if they need any work and if they need to be refurbished obviously they need to be cleaned that one was kept in a shed um, 
the bourbon up here is black, doesn't work, and then the uh, C64C here has some kind of corrupt output. Um, so I'm struggling with those two, I'll get to those eventually. Um, but other things take priority. So if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, 16-Bit Bench. Uh, thanks for dropping by and uh, we'll see you next time. It's family. Get fucked! Oh shit! Oh shit!